the reality is the Christie uh, uh, approach by these folks to Christie uh, itself was remarkable because as much as we thought Christie kind of looked at the race and there was some interest, you spend a lot of time detailing what you refer to as Hamlet of Drum Thwacket. Drum yeah. Thwacket is the, the sure. governor's house in New Jersey and how he's walking up to the edge of being Mario Cuomo of this race and not being able to decide and what do I do and agonizing about it ultimately decides not to run, but Christie really was looking at this a fairly, uh, a, a lot, fairly late into the cycle. Much more closely than anybody uh, thought, and much right. more closely than he ever admitted until the day that he announced that he wasn't going to do it. Right. Up until that moment, he kept saying, nothing's changed, nothing's changed, I'm not going to do this. In fact, in private, he's on the phone with George W. Bush. He's on the phone with Barbara Bush. He's on right. the phone with uh, meeting with donors, big donors like Ken Langone, the founder of Home Depot. Home Depot. He's right. meeting at his house with Karl Rove to go through the steps of what it would take. He's doing a lot of stuff, and then of course doing some things publicly, like going to the Reagan Library and giving a speech there. He's doing a lot of of recon for a guy who claims that he's not at all looking at the race. And yeah. then at the end, when it's the time for him to decide, he says, "I'm going to decide on this weekend." And he gets to the end of that weekend, and he still hasn't made up his mind. He right. still needs one more day Taking it to seriously. wrestle with his mind, right. which tells him, you know, maybe this could work, and his gut, which tells him, I'm not sure I'm ready for this. Ultimately, the gut prevails right. over the mind in his case. But again, the fact that he was considering it born of angst over Mitt Romney's chances, as we, as we discussed before, and of course, his own ego played a role in this. My favorite thing in the entire book, as I've shared with you, <laughs> when uh, Governor Christie decides ultimately not to run, he brings Mitt and Ann Romney to his house to tell them he's decided not, you know, to, to give them his prized uh, endorsement in the race. And Ann Romney says, Governor, you have no idea how big this is that you're endorsing us. And Governor Christie says, Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do know how big this is. And I, and I thought, this guy, I hope this guy runs. To see this guy and Rick Perry, for instance, in a race together, Knocking heads will be something. Will be something else. Well, part of part of what um, the timing of Governor Christie's intense consideration of this right. was around the time Governor Perry got in. He didn't think much of Governor Perry and thought he thought Romney would probably be the nominee. Yeah. But the fact that Rick Perry was being treated as such a serious candidate by Tells a lot of him, people yeah. really got under his skin to some extent and right. made him think. If, if this is sort of what the big the big uh, dog in this race is going to be, I should be in this race. Maybe this is my moment right. to run. And that's something we write about in both Game Change and Double Down, which is this notion of you have a group of people, not very big, but, you know, recognizable, who think someday I'm going to run for president. And the question they always face is, is this my time? Right. Can I wait four more years? In Governor Christie's case, he decided wait, wait I can wait years. four more years. Now, history may prove that that was a great decision, right. or maybe he missed his moment.